Hey guys, David here and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from a 2D sketch, which I think I've explained pretty well, to a 3D object. So I already created a bunch of sketches here so that this video goes a bit quicker. Let's hide most of them first though, so that we don't get confused. So I just created a simple sketch, just a rectangle and I already showed you extrude the first one, but I'm still gonna show you again. So you just go and select this face that you wanna extrude, then you can just pull out and create a three-dimensional body. You can also change some more settings in here. Like you can go either directly from that profile or you can even have an offset, let's say five. So this will make that the body doesn't start immediately at your sketch, but five millimeters above. For the direction, you can go one side, which is like usually, or you can go two sides with like different extents, or you can go symmetric, which goes both sides with the same amount. Most of the time you're probably gonna use one side though. And you can either go distance, like that, or you can go to an object or all. So what I sometimes do is when there's already another object there and I'm creating a new one and when I push it right to the edge, then you can extrude it so where it's pretty close and then you go over and click on the face of this other object. And then it's gonna extrude just so it's basically on the same level. You can just play around with that a little bit. And as I already showed down here, you have the different operations, join, cut, intersect, new body, or new component. I'm gonna show you the cut and intersect a little bit more detail later. And then let's hit OK to confirm, and that's our cube that we created here. But I'm actually gonna get rid of that cube again, and I'm gonna hide this sketch. The next one I wanna show you is revolve, and this very similar to extrude, but you're going around an axis to create a round shape. So let's select this. Um, the profile I want to use is this kind of inverse Christmas tree looking thing. And the axis, I'm gonna choose, choose the Z axis here. And as you can see, it automatically goes all the way around and creates this thing here, whatever that is. But you can also go less than 360 degrees and just create a partial revolve around. And again, there's like two sides, one side, and you can create it as new body or whatever. And that looks like that. For this next one, we actually need two different sketches. I have one, this circle here, that's kind of on the side like that, and then I have this sweeping line. And what we're gonna do is create a sweep which is just like an extrude, but instead of going perpendicular straight out, it's gonna go along a path that we select. So we're gonna select the profile here, which is our circle, and then the path is this line here. And this creates this rather nice looking snake here. And as you can see, the profile, our circle here, is nicely following along the line that we selected. If you want the circle to stay on its side all the time, we can do that by changing orientation here from perpendicular to parallel, which as you can see creates this really thin section here as the circle moves around like that and creates the shape like that instead of moving around this way. Most of the time you're probably gonna want perpendicular though. Once again, there are more other options in there that you can change, just play around with them if you're curious. And to create a loft, we're also gonna use two sketches again. This is basically gonna do a uniform transition between one sketch and then a different one that's on a different plane. So I just offset this second sketch up here and when I'm gonna select this profile here for the first one and then I'm also gonna select this one for the second one. And as you can see, it moves very nicely from this Rectangle down there to a circle up there. And then we can just click OK. And it might 
not come across it very well here on the screen, but on the top it's perfectly round, as like a circle that's perfectly round, but then on the bottom it's a rectangle. So there's an edge that is coming out of this smooth surface. And this really looks kind of cool. And I created another thing here to show you a different one. Uh, I basically took the shape from, shape from before but made it like a hollow thing. And what I'm going to show you here is the web. And what, what you can use that for if you have a structure that's hollow but you want to create some supports in there. Now here for curves we can just select our lines here and then we can want to give it some thickness. I'm going to do like 3 millimeters. And as you can see, it detects that this is like a hollow structure and creates these walls in there that are thin and only go to the surface. Now this is like a rather fancy thing that's automatically doing that. So you don't have to tell them how far to go or anything. So it senses that automatically, which is quite handy if you need something like that. And to showcase the rib, I created this line here that is kind of floating in the air but connecting these two things. So I'm gonna choose rib here, select this one and give it some thickness and as you can see it automatically creates a rib here. Which again you can use to support your structures. So in here in the create menu you can also see a bunch of like three-dimensional shapes automatically that don't require a separate sketch. So if you just want to create a simple box, then you actually don't have to create a rectangular sketch first. You can just select the face you want to start on and it automatically creates a sketch, but doesn't move like in sketch view, it just stays this way. Then you can choose your rectangle and it automatically goes to extrusion and you can choose it that way. You can also still modify it in all the directions while you're working here in extrusion. This allows you to just really quickly create a new box if you want that. And now that we have a box here, let's go to the hole option, which you could either create a sketch on top of this cube, create a circle on that sketch and then extrude it down to get rid of this. But instead what I can do is just create this hole, select the sketch and then position the hole where you want it and choose what you want here depth 40 millimeters let's put that down to like 20 and diameter to 5 and as you can see it all automatically creates this hole in here and you can even like model it in a way where it's like a drill which has like this angle in the front or you can just like make it flat however you want it. This is meant for CNC machining that you can just easily add the holes like they're gonna come out of a drill. And once you have a hole here, you can also directly create a thread in there. So I created this hole in here and I'm just gonna select it in the thread option. And it's automatically gonna select what it thinks that I wanted. I made this hole five millimeters, so it's gonna assume that I want it for an M5 screw, which it's quite likely that I would do that. And if I wanted for like an imperial screw, I would probably size the hole the size I wanted. But I can also change that here, like change the pitch or even change the size in here to whatever else I need. And then just click OK and as you can see, if you zoom in here, it created this nice thread without us having to do any like heavy lifting. Now this threading in here is just like basically shown on there, but it isn't actually modeled. So the model is still just a hole, but it Fusion knows that this is a thread. So if you go over into CAM and try to export it and stuff, it knows that this is a thread and not just a hole. And it also looks cool like that. And I'm not gonna go through all of these down here, like the cylinder is basically the same as with the box. Um, with the sphere you just basically select one point to start off and then you create the sphere. And here, I can't believe I haven't shown it you yet. That's what happens if you intersect two things. Then automatically it's gonna go into cut and assume that I wanna cut 
all the objects that are displayed with the new one that I'm creating. So I'm using this giant ball here to cut a side out of this cube. Or I can jo join do join, which is just going to create it. Or what's kind of funny is intersect, which is just going to leave whatever is intersecting. So it's basically the opposite of cutting. So when you're modeling something, it's going to be a combination of extrusion and cutting away. Because you can't always just extrude everything in one go. The only one other one I want to show here is the coil. As it looks kind of cool, I'm going to create here just the overall size of the coil that you want. And then it's automatically going to create a coil like that. And you can change all the different things in here, like how many revolutions you want. You can do 50 revolutions and then it's going to create a giant coil that it doesn't even want to render right now. So let's put that down to like four. And then you can also change like the height of it and everything. And that basically can create nice coils like that very easily in here. And when we go further down here, we also have pattern and mirror and they basically work exactly the same as they do in two dimensions, except it goes into three dimensions. So I'm not even going to go more into this. And the stuff down here, you don't really need to begin with. So this video was a bit longer again, but I hope I explained this nicely to you. So if you liked it, leave a like down below, consider subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.